yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Ross Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast. We are presented, of course, by DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love those of you that use the code Ross over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Hey, we got schedule games being released. Already this morning, recording on a Monday morning, we know it's Chiefs-Ravens opening night. That will be epic. You can already bet on that game. At DraftKings Sportsbook. Just use the code Ross to get whatever goodies and discounts they have for you from me. We always bet on this show. We bet the college football biggest games each week with my guy Emery Hunt at F Ball Game Plan on Twitter. I'm just gonna say it. I would say, other than my mom, my sister, my wife, and my daughters. Emory Hunt might be my favorite person in the world. No offense to Jack, my producer. This freaking guy, okay, was in Waterloo tweeting about the UFL. <laughs> I don't even know where Waterloo is, but he's doing videos of drills in Waterloo while he's tweeting about, like, pass protection, the UFL, and then somehow he's interviewing Dayball at Giants minicamp. I, I don't know where this guy comes from or how he does it, but he is everywhere at once and can still come on my show on Monday mornings. Absolute football legend. Football game plan on YouTube. It's never too late to get the draft guide footballgameplan.com slash 2024 draft guide. And because Emery breaks down three games of video on all of these prospects, is it three or two, Emery? It's three. Three. Since Emery breaks down three games of video on all these prospects, we talk about all of them. Every draft choice today from the NFC North and Emery's two or three favorite undrafted free agents for each team including your team. Great chance for these guys to maybe make the roster, maybe at worst, practice squad. I should probably have pointed out my name is Ross Tucker, at Ross Tucker NFL on social media. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Tuesdays, we do the Even Money Podcast. Tomorrow is going to be dicey because I'll be in the midst of my first ever colonoscopy prep. So that podcast might be done via the toilet. Wednesday will be the Fantasy Feast podcast. I'm telling you right now, Eric Eager was incredible on today's Ross Tucker football podcast. The new Carolina Panthers analytics guru, that is a whole other fascinating way to look at football. And we primarily were talking about decision making during the game, which is just bananas. Like, I didn't know teams take into account whether or not they're the underdog. When they're making certain decisions, just wild, wild, high level stuff. But we got to get to Emory. Emory, you got to first, like, where were you? What the heck were you doing? And why were you doing it? And why are you a living legend? <laughs> One, I was at the 2025 or 2024 U Sports East West Bowl, which is the Canadian College All Star event. Now, they play theirs before the season. How we have in the States the Senior Bowl, which is postseason. Because of the climate up there in Canada, you have to play your postseason all-star game before the season. So it was a great chance to get a jump on who's going to be the Canadian guys we're talking about in the draft. And you know I have my scouting notes ready. As you guys can see there, my rosters are who's standing out on both teams. So we got the intel already for the 2025 draft. It was in Waterloo, Ontario, on the campus of the University of Waterloo. Um, fantastic facilities. It's just outside of Toronto, about 40 minutes west of Toronto. Um, and it was great to get out there. A lot of the CFL scouts for each team was out there as they're getting ready for their training camp. Um, uh, I know University of Toronto, uh, I've been to Toronto Argonauts was practicing their training camp at University of Guelph, which is like 30 minutes away. 
Um, so it was, it was a lot going on, but it was great to get up there. I always interesting to see the next Canadian talent that we'll be talking about here in January. But we're going to talk about Canadian talent for the Bears coming up pretty soon. You know what? It's uh, it's a good time for me to bring this up too. Last week, we had Isaiah Adams on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the third-round pick offensive lineman out of Illinois for the Arizona Cardinals. It was awesome talking with him about, you know, growing up in Canada, playing hockey, and then he's one of the rare guys I've ever heard, Emery, that actually got drafted earlier than he thought he was going to go. He thought he'd go late third round. He went a little bit higher than that, so I love hearing those stories because that's crazy rare so love that you were up there love everything about it let's dive in to the nfc north picks Uh, getting very excited about this we've spent more than enough time on caleb williams and rome adunze although uh, yeah we've talked about those guys enough i don't know i mean just give me a sentence on each of those guys i guess emory they both were by number one uh, players at their respective positions. Obviously, quarterback for Caleb Williams and split in for Roma Madunze. So, obviously, I feel like Chicago knocked those out. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's get to their other picks. And it starts with the third round. They took Kieran Amagaje, the offensive tackle from Yale. Who, by the way, like, he had a bad injury last year. So, for him to still go in the third round... He must be like a absolute freak. And then in the fourth round, they took Tory Taylor, the punter from Iowa. And in the fifth round, Austin Booker, edge rusher, Kansas. What do you got on these guys, Emery? Amagaji is my number five offensive tackle, and I had an 84 grade on him. So I thought highly of him. And this is someone that has the length, the athleticism to really be a problem right out of the gate. And Yale was one of those programs, just like Dartmouth, just like a lot of programs uh, in the Ivy League. They're outstanding up front. Harvard is another one. And so he was battle-tested all throughout his collegiate career um, when they played out-of-conference games. I always bring up the Morgan State game because we'll be talking about Morgan State's defensive lineman, Elijah Williams, next year. And he did a good job against him up front, along with Noah Washington, who was an undrafted rookie free agent in this class. So. I'm a big fan of what he brings to the table. This was a home run pick, in my opinion, for uh, the Bears. And again, Taylor, Iowa punter, I don't have no scout report on him, but he was he probably was the most valuable player on that team over Cooper DeGene. Based off how they punted the football, you called a game last year where you they, they scanned to the, to the crowds and you saw the shirts that said, we love to punt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I, listen, that's a good pick for Chicago. Um, and I thought I thought when, when they took Booker, very good athlete, um, plays a lot longer than he's listed, which is impressive. So he still has more upside to go. I think they got a good one a, a still there uh, in round five. What about the undrafted free agents, Emory? This is where I thought they knocked out the park continuously. Um, Theo Benedict, we alluded to it earlier uh, about being up in Canada. Well, when I saw him play at the Youth Sports East West Bowl of 2022 and 2023, we saw the talent there. So it was like, oh, this dude is going to be a guy. He was also quite as kept at the East-West Shrine Bowl last year. So the good part about Canadian college sports is that you can go through the whole draft process, get to training camp, and then decide to go back to school. So he went back to UBC um, with, his, with his teammate, Giovanni Manu, uh, and then went out this year and was just well-groomed for the pro game. So he's a fantastic Wait, wait, wait. Is that right, Emory? I didn't know that. How does that work? Yeah. You can go to training camp and then decide to return to school, you know, which is cool. What? Yeah, it, it, it sucks for the draft, but you can go to, to training camp. And so, be- hold on a second. This guy was eligible for the draft last year. Yeah. Was in the East-West Shrine Bowl. Yep. Did not get drafted, obviously. Correct. Did he sign with a team? Uh, I can't, re- I can't recall. He probably did not sign with the team. He probably decided, if I'm not going to get drafted, I'm going to go back to school. Go back to school. Because he got drafted in the CFL, so, but he went back to, he went back to school um, and, and played. 
It, and listen, so you got a guy. I never that, knew that, Emery. That's fascinating. Which which kind of makes sense, right? We see this a lot where guys go undrafted in the in the states, and like, man, he probably should have stayed in school. Well, you get the opportunity to go back to school in Canada, um, which is fascinating. And so I like the fact that the Bears got him. You know, the Bears did a good job of uh, building depth within this offensive line. Benedict is going to be a surprise in, in camp. Peter LeBlanc, got to bring him up. Fantastic raging Cajun. I felt like he'd been there for, for, for ages. But he's a core special teamer, a guy that had, if you remember the name, that was the kid that had the big game against Iowa State, caught that deep ball in that upset win out there in uh, at Iowa State. And um, he, he's someone, he was at the Tropical Bowl, had a really good week there considering the, the circumstances. So I like him being someone that can fit in on special teams. And this is where the Bears, I thought, did a good job. Austin Reed, the quarterback, plays a lot like Caleb Williams in terms of how he sprays the ball around the field. Um, starred at West Florida, elevated himself to an FBS player at Western Kentucky, and played really well there for two years. So I thought that was a really good pick. I think he got. I think he has a great chance to really nab that QB three job. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Let's move on to the Detroit Lions. And before we do, I want to make sure everybody knows how much I love Labatt Blue Light. By the way, a lot of Labatt Blue Light in Detroit. It is delicious. I had several this weekend. Living life to the power of we with my family, my daughters. They were in their musical. That's what I would have before the musical. Made it even more enjoyable. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All right, Emery. Let's get into the Detroit Lions. So I know we talked about Terry and Arnold, but tell me again with Arnold, who did you have rated higher? What grade did you have for Arnold and uh, Quinion Mitchell for the Eagles? Arnold was my number one boundary corner at an 80 and a half grade. And um, so he was the number one guy. And Mitchell was number two with an 80 degree. So it was like they were right there, neck and neck. Um, I'm laughing because, you, you know, we do the, you do the Labatt Blue uh, promos, and I was in Canada having Labatt Blue. So it tastes different up there in, the, in, the, in a different with the land of, uh, of Elks, right? So, um, but Arnold was, Arnold was outstanding. So I thought that was a good pick for, for Detroit. And, and let's be fair, Detroit is going to always have a special place in my heart because they must have bought the draft guide last year because they aced all their picks last year. So whatever grade I give Detroit is going to be a little bit biased. So they're already off to a great start with Arnold, who was my number one boundary corner. What did, what did just out of curiosity, was, was there anything you liked about Arnold more so than um, Mitchell? Technique. He was consistent with his technique. And uh, you, saw, you saw less gambling on his side, more so than Mitchell. Mitchell was, you know, is, a, is an aggressive corner by nature, and it does pay off when he picks the ball off. But I thought, Arnold took less chances, but was so technically sound um, that he was always in the right spot to make a play. Their next pick was uh, Ennis Rakestraw. I don't know if we ever talked about him, Emery. Maybe we did. I can't remember. I, 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 I kind of forget, but I want to get your thoughts on him. Solid corner, man. And, and here's the thing. That Missouri secondary, first of all, the Missouri defense was fantastic. But Rakestraw is an aggressive corner. He's going to come up there and lay the boom. Um, so he can help you stay strong versus the run. Um, not the, not the swiftest or the, the, you know, the, he's not the athlete Arnold is, but for someone that can be, um, a solid, uh, cornerback too, that's a, that's a solid pick for Detroit. They needed depth in the secondary and they rent, went and got two corners right out of the gate with picks one and two. You know, and both those guys haven't watched some feisty man. They're both feisty. Like the Lions have a type, bro, they, and they're, and they're not deviating from it. That it's building. It's a brand, and we don't see that enough in the NFL nowadays. You, we see it a lot in college. We used to see it a lot in college, but I feel like college has gotten away from it. Remember how you used to go into Nebraska? This is a triple option with explosive talent, five star talent. You go to you know uh, a team like Alabama, you know they was going to run the heck out of the ball, big O lineman, big D lineman. Florida was going to spread the field and air, air it out. Identities in football is what we need to get back to, and Detroit has one. Of the, outside of Baltimore, Detroit probably has the, the, the clear-cut identity 
of this is what they are, this is who they are, and this is what they're going to be. Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Detroit, and it's funny, all in the Midwest. Technically, uh, Baltimore is on the Mid-Atlantic, but you get what I'm saying. They fit the mold of the city, and they, they uh, exemplify that on the football field. Their next picks, we're going right back to British Columbia. It's Canada Day here on the College Draft Podcast. Giovanni Manu. Look, I've seen pictures of that guy. <laughs> He look he looks like an absolute animal, that guy. Then they took Sione Vaki. We don't even know what position he plays. Listen, as a running back out of Utah, those are the two fourth round picks, Emery. Yeah, listen, I didn't have a grade on Manu, but I knew about him and I saw him live because I thought he was going back to school. Because I, I saw Benedict go back to school. Um but imagine if you were head coach Blake Neal at British Columbia, University of British Columbia. You have two NFL tackles out there, play, you know, leading the way on your outside zones. Like, they just mashing dudes. And low-key, just to get ahead of the curve, they have two more linemen, Ross, that we'll be talking about next year because uh, I saw them up in uh, at the East-West Bowl as well and a running back that I like, too, from UBC. So it all fits. So Manu, large, he's bigger than Benedict. Uh, which is probably why he, he saw himself drafted, which is impressive because Benedict is a big guy. Um, Manu does a great job. You know, once he latches on, the rep is over, it is done. Uh, so he's going to be excellent for their run game, which is kind of what they do in Detroit. Identity, we talked about that. Um, and Vaki, I gave this pick an A because, again, you're right. We don't know what position he plays, but he plays football. And when you factor in the new change in the kickoff rule, he helps you there too because he's an outstanding kickoff returner. And now you get someone that can help you as a returner, can help you in coverage. So these two picks to me just, again, were two excellent selections for Detroit. All right. Then their their last two picks, both six-rounders, Makai Wingo, the D-tackle from LSU, Christian Mahogany, guard from B.C., Mahogany was my number five guard. I had a 78 grade on him. I thought he should have gone earlier, maybe in round three. But big fan of what he brought to the table. I just love how he finished blocks, um, putting guys in the ground, like le- legitimately in the ground. You watch him at Boston College, and, you know, it just it, it just felt like this was a guy that was going to either go to Pittsburgh or go to Baltimore. But like we just talked about, he ends up in Detroit. And I had a pretty high grade on him. So obviously I love the pick. What about, uh, Emory, undrafted guys for the Detroit Lions? Two guys to mention. Brian Hudson was my number three center with a 77 grade out of Louisville. They got him. I think that's a great uh, acquisition. And Jalen uh, Calhoun, I spoke with him at the Hula Bowl, um, you know, all throughout the week. And this is someone I spoke with him during the game as a sideline analyst uh, wearing that, that, uh, <laughs> that Hawaiian shirt. Um, but Calhoun is a, is a pro's pro. Plays a pro game already. Very good slot receiver, and I think this is going to be someone that we can see, again, have a nice little role on special teams. Let's get to the Green Bay Packers because they had a ton of picks. Jordan Morgan in the first round. Second round, Edger and Cooper and Javon Bullard. Third round, Marshawn Lloyd, Tyron Hopper. I should point out, Jordan Morgan, O line in Arizona. Edger and Cooper, linebacker, A and M. Javon Bullard, safety, Georgia. Why don't you start with those three guys and your thoughts, Emery? Lloyd and Cooper were my number two players at their respective position. Lloyd was my number two running back, and the comp I had for him was Aaron Jones. So clearly, they have a type in Green Bay, right? A guy that can do a great job of weaving his runs together. Kind of always hits the hole at the right time. I was a big fan of his game. He had a really good senior bowl. Edrin Cooper reminded me of the old school wrecking crew that we used to watch growing up for all at A&M. When these dudes is like Quentin Corey. Yeah, we spoke about this before where they just laid the lumber on, on backs and receivers traveling across the middle of the field. Cooper is the same way. He's kind of like what they already have in Quay Walker. So it's going to be fascinating to watch how those guys work themselves out because they, they both are long, athletic, kind of rangy guys. But Cooper, to me, is, a, is an old school thumper. I had an 80 grade on Cooper, so I kind of thought he would, I would have taken him in the first round and would have been happy with it. But Lloyd is going to be a guy that I think has a legit option uh, to be a, a timeshare guy uh, with Jacobs because both guys really can run. Their next three picks, round three, Tyron Hopper, linebacker, Missouri. Round four, Evan Williams, safety, Oregon. 
Round five, Jacob Monk, center from Duke. Um, Evan Williams is someone that was intriguing to me because he can match up across the back end. I graded him as a strong safety. Uh, this He has good athleticism. He is someone that can fly up and run support, play the alley rather, rather well, um, and gives them some strength on the back end in that regard. So that was, to me, one of the, the, you know, the guys, along with seventh-round pick Michael Pratt uh, out of Tulane, who was my number 10 QB with a 75 grade. I felt like that's an underrated selection and a nice developmental option, getting back to the old Sue Packer way of drafting a young guy, developing him. We saw this with Mark Brunel. We saw this with Aaron Brooks. We've seen this before with the, with the Green Bay Packers, where if they can develop a guy, let him play in the preseason, and he becomes an attractive option for someone else. I think he can get the QB2 job, to be honest. Any thoughts on fifth-rounder Katano Adapo, sixth-rounder Travis Glover, or seventh-rounder Kalen King? King is someone that was impressive, you know, uh, had a lot of early buzz. Then he entered the draft early, and then he just didn't have the best all-star game process. So him going in the seventh round as an early entry uh, was surprising, but you get someone that now has a chip on the shoulder. Obviously, in the seventh round, you're talking about core special teamers, so we'll see how it goes. Any undrafted guys there you really liked? Yeah, they got two. Jarvion Howard of uh, Alcorn State, who had a great HBCU combine workout, and so much of a great workout. He um, mailed it in after one day of practice. Like, all right, I did enough in the workout. I get one day of practice in. I'm shutting it down. He, he is a, a bull when he runs the football. He's about 5'9", 215. Good uh, downhill runner. James Esther was my number seven defense tackle, 78 grade out of Cincinnati. I think this guy has an outstanding chance to not only make the roster, but get into the rotation. Last but not least, let's talk Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings. We know a lot about J.J. McCarthy. We've talked about Dallas Turner, their edge rusher. Round four. Kyrie Jackson, cornerback, Oregon, round six, offensive tackle from Oklahoma, Walter Rouse. The other pick in round six, Will Riker, kicker from Alabama, absolutely not going to talk about him. Kyrie Jackson, Walter Rouse, Emery. Both guys I gave 75 grades to, so this, this was solid value in my opinion where they took him. Jackson is a long, lengthy corner. Helps them on the back end. They needed some help there. I think they got a good one in. And him, he had a really good uh, week down at the Senior Bowl, too. Walter Rouse does a great job of sustaining blocks. He doesn't really let guys slip those blocks. Um, building depth within that offensive line group is, is going to be great. So where they took those both guys, I thought they were really good, excellent picks. Then uh, the last two picks, they had seventh rounders. Michael Jurgens, a center from Wake Forest. Levi Drake Rodriguez, a D-tackle Texas A&M Commerce. Ross, we've been talking about uh, Levy Drake Rodriguez for since January, since coming from these All-Star Games. We haven't talked about him that much if I said his name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, this is the second year in the, this is the second year in a row that Texas A&M Commerce has had a fantastic defensive lineman that I've been a fan of, and Rodriguez did a great job at the FCS Bowl. Really stood out there. Okay, cool. Check that box. But then he gets to call up to the Tropical Bowl against FBS competition and stood out there, too. It was outstanding. And so I was like, man, am I, am I overhyping the small school guy? Or is this dude really good? So I had a high grade on him. He was my ninth defensive tackle with a 76th grade. And last year it was Celestine Haba, who was an edge rusher, who was my fifth edge rusher. He went undrafted, but he got picked up that year by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and was leading the league in sacks as a rookie until he got injured. So. Texas A&M Commerce does a great job of developing these defensive linemen. This was a fantastic pick in round seven. This was a dude that really stood out throughout the all-star game circuit and had some buzz from scouts. So I was impressed that he got drafted. I was happy for him because this was someone that really went through the process underrated and got drafted. What about their undrafted guys? This is where they knocked it out the park, Ross. Uh, Jeremy Flax from Kentucky, great hula bowl, got the call up to the senior bowl. Tackle 78 great. Ty James and Devron Harper. Two excellent receivers from Mercer. Got a chance to watch those guys uh, perform at the All-Star Game Circuit, Hula Bowl, in particular, Trey Knox. I thought this guy was going to get drafted. My third H-back, 77 grade, underrated player, has a great chance to make the roster. Um, Dwight McLaughlin, the field corner, number 12, 76 grade, 
fantastic player out of Arkansas. And edge rusher Gabriel Murphy out of UCLA was my number five edge rusher with a 78 grade. So locking this up and you compare it with what they drafted in the this was a, a very good draft for Minnesota from the guys they drafted and this list of undrafted rookie free agents they were able to, to bring in. Yeah, sounds like they just pulled up your list for who they should take as undrafted guys. I love it. Fantastic stuff. Other than that, the keg is kicked. We're all tapped out. Thanks for tuning in to College Draft. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money, and Fantasy Feast, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. 